हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज प्रिया एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल बैक टू माय चैनल पिक्टो लर्निंग आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी डिस्कस्ड आर्टिकल 48 ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इफ यू हैवेंट सीन दैट वीडियो येट देन द लिंक इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स मूविंग अहेड इन आर सीरीज टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट आर्टिकल फोर्टी एट ए एज यू कैन सी हियर इट इज रिटन ए That means Article Forty Eight A was added later in the Indian Constitution. When was this article added? This article was added by the Forty Second Amendment Act of nineteen seventy six, which is also known as Mini Constitution. Why is this amendment called Mini Constitution? Because by this amendment, a lot of changes were made in the Indian Constitution, and Article Forty Eight A was one of them. Now moving ahead article 48a comes under liberal intellectual principles as we have already discussed that all the articles of dpsp have been classified into three categories socialistic principles gandhian principles and liberal intellectual principles which we have discussed in detail in the introductory video of dpsp if you want to watch that video you will find the link in the description so now article 48 a comes under liberal intellectual principles this article talks about protection and improvement of environment and safeguarding of forests and wildlife the provision of article 48 a says that the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country now this is the actual provision given in the indian constitution which is quite clear from the statement itself article 48 a is guiding the states and the authorities of state to work towards two thing with all their efforts number 1 to protect and improve the environment and number 2 to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country now let us understand these two points in brief the first point talks about protecting and improving the environment why because the environment plays an important role in the existence of life and environment is everything that is around us which includes both living and non living things such as air land water food human being animals and plants we all are dependent on the environment for food air water and other needs so it is very important to protect and improve the environment the second point talks about safeguarding the forest and wildlife First of all we need to understand the difference between forest and wildlife or better we say the relation between forest and wildlife forest is basically a large area of land covered with trees and plants forest provide habitats for plants and animals and many times you might have heard that forest are lungs of the earth whereas wildlife describes all wild animals and birds that are undomesticated undomesticated means not living under human control wildlife has ecological importance economic importance investigatory importance cultural importance agricultural importance and many more so wildlife plays an important role in balancing the environment so basically this article that is article 48a of the indian constitution guide the states and the authorities of state to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country now as i mentioned article 48a was added later in the indian constitution that is by 42nd amendment act of 1976 so we should know the reason why this article was added later to the indian constitution so the reason for this was stockholm conference 1972 the motto of this conference was only one earth so this was the first time that there was a major conference of un on environmental issues Stockholm conference 1972 is a very important and a huge topic in itself so let us understand it in a little short why this conference took place only in 1972 so first of all stockholm is in sweden it starts around 1968 69 during this time by the swedish government the proposal was given to the united nations that the world environment is getting degraded During the 1960s a lot of industrial developments were taking place in the western countries due to which pollution was increasing and at the same time the cold war was also going on due to which there was a threat of nuclear radiation so due to all these reasons the threat to the environment was increasing a lot and then on the initiative of the swedish government the stockholm conference was held in 1972 The declaration that came after the Stockholm meeting is called the Stockholm Declaration. 
in which 26 principles related to environment and development were mentioned, and India supported it a lot. And for this reason, by the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976, Article 48A and Article 51A were inserted in the Indian Constitution for the protection of the environment. Let us now understand that, apart from Article 48A, what are the other articles where the protection of the environment have been talked about? So those articles are Article 21, Article 51AG and Article 253. Article 21, which lies under Part 3 of the Indian Constitution as a fundamental right, talks about the right to life and personal liberty. Right to life also includes right to pollution-free environment. Why? Because Article 21 does not only cover basic living, but living in better and dignified conditions. Article 51AG, which lies under Part 4A of the Indian Constitution as a fundamental duty, says that it shall be duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forest, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. And Article 253, which lies under Part 11 of the Indian Constitution, talks about legislation for giving effect to international agreements. This article says, Parliament has power to make any law for the whole or any part of the territory of India for implementing any treaty, agreement or convention with any other country or countries or any decision made at any international conference, association or other body. So now you will ask what this article has to do with the environmental protection. Here nothing is written about the environment. So the answer is that just a while ago we talked about the Stockholm conference which was held in 1972 regarding environmental protection in which India also participated. So this type of international conference or treaty where there is a need for a change in our country then in order to implement such treaty or conference this article was inserted in the Indian constitution. For example, Stockholm Conference of 1972. After this conference, changes were made regarding environment in India as well, such as Article 48A and Article 51A were added in the Indian Constitution by 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. Apart from this, some laws were also implemented, about which we will see in a while. So these were the three articles apart from Article 48A where things related to the environment have been mentioned. Now, apart from this, the thing which is important for us to understand is that these subjects, that is environment, forest, wildlife, in which list all these are mentioned. As you all know and we have mentioned several times in our videos that the seventh schedule of the Indian constitution talks about the allocation of powers and functions between the union and the state legislature, that is central government and the state government. Now the subject of forest and the protection of wild animals and birds have been mentioned in the third list, that is concurrent list of the Indian constitution, which means both state government as well as the central government can make laws on the subject of environment, forest and wildlife. These subjects of forest, wild animals and birds were not in the third list from the beginning. These subjects used to be part of the second list, that is state list which means that earlier only the state government could make laws on these subject. But by 42nd Amendment Act of 1976 itself, changes were made here too. And these subjects, that is forest protection of wild animals and birds, were removed from the state list and inserted in the concurrent list. This means that after the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976, both the state government and the central government can make laws on these subjects. After this, you should know one more thing, that is, this word environment, this word itself has not been mentioned anywhere in these three lists. However, like we associate environment with forest, sanitation, water, public health, etc. Therefore, whenever a law has to be made to improve the environment, all these things are taken into consideration. So according to that, as we have just seen that the subject of forest is mentioned in the third list, that is concurrent list, and the subject related to sanitation, water, public health, etc. have been included in the second list, that is state list. Okay? Now let's see some laws related to environment, forest and wildlife. As we discussed just a while ago about the Stockholm Conference of 1972, that it was the first UN conference where environmental issues were discussed on a serious note, in which India also participated. So after this conference, 
in order to further strict the environmental provisions in India by 42nd Amendment Act of 1976, two articles were added to the Indian Constitution. Article 48A, which was inserted in DPSP, where states were given the responsibility that it will be their foremost duty to protect and improve the environment, forest and wildlife. And Article 51A, in which Part G said that it is also the duty of the citizens to protect the environment, forest, wildlife, lakes, rivers and other living creatures. Apart from this, following 1972, various laws and acts were enacted to better the environment. So those laws are Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, which was later amended several times to make it better, such as in 1982, 1986, 1991, 1993, 2002, 2006 and in 2022. The recent amendment of this Act has been done in 2022, which has been implemented from 1st April 2023. Apart from this, the Forest Conservation Act of 1980, the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act of 1974, the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981, the Environment Protection Act of 1986, the Energy Conservation Act of 2001, Biological Diversity Act of 2002, Scheduled Tribes and Other Traditional Forest Dwellers, Recognition of Forest Rights Act of 2006, the National Green Tribunal Act of 2010, Compensatory Afforestation Fund Act of 2016, etc. Apart from these laws, some projects and schemes are launched by the Government of India to protect environment such as Namami Gange Program, Green Skill Development Program, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, etc. So these were the details related to Article 48A of the Indian Constitution. I hope you must have found this video informative. So that's all for today from my side. I'll see you again in the next video. Till then, thank you so much for watching Picto Learning.